Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm, I'm the old, just classic Jordan. Uh, we're joined <laughs> by a very special guest, uh, the one, the only, uh, Ludwig. Actually, many of us. There's many Ludwigs, and oh. I'm not the most famous Ludwig right now. Yeah, I know. I just watched um, Oppenheimer, and the mm-hmm. soundtrack was uh, Ludwig Gronson. Oh, that fucker. Yeah, that, he just he keeps had a coming out with up. bangers. I, you he, you uh, almost did the soundtrack to Black Panther because you were saying you understand yeah, the yeah. better. And yeah. you almost produced all those Childish Gambino records. Then I did I did the subathon instead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh and he just kept making good music. It's insane. <laughs> Nate Stans invites you around for dinner and doesn't tell you that's Black Panther Day. Yeah. He has no respect for the No, I'm not an ally at all. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth Gonda forever. Hey, Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome, Lud. Hello. Happy to be here, ready to talk about feelings yeah we'll do that at some point okay. we usually start with you know the easy topics and then we do want to know what makes you tick sure just because p- we as creators don't talk enough about our feelings right and what makes you tick and what makes you tick all right so we're going to start easy which is phil's coffee we're, oh yeah we're, we're talking about phil's coffee then i'm gonna go to I, israel palestine and then <laughs> a little later the easy stuff yeah i was dogging it and then you said it was made by a palestinian dude and then i was like well now I feel yeah like it should be yeah i really pulled right. the rank on you without it no so okay uh so phil uh jabber jaber is the the founder of phil's coffee um which is a a friend of the show in that we have just we used to get it in San Francisco all the time because we lived really close to it. And so now it's kind of a thing for the show that we just always give this free advertisement to this random brand not that does not sponsor us at all. Yeah. Nobody owes us more. Yeah. <laughs> like, the CEO Phils does follow me on Twitter and I've been waiting to make the call. Yeah, I feel like they're big. They they have like a couple hundred locations, I think, which is big. It's a lot of locations. Not, okay, but we're, you know, in this grand scheme of things, I think like coffee cultures is bigger. Sure. I think you know, and like that's, but that sucks. Yeah, I'm saying they could, they could, hey, look, just free coffee. I'm yeah, not, that's all I'm asking. If they give me like a little custom mug that I get to Oh, bring that would be and sweet. They, I get free refills. Or like or the something. Chipotle card, but for fills. Oh, the fills yeah, card. where you get like endless fills. Ugh, Dude, the dream. Endless fills. So the reason I the reason we're talking about Phil's is one your coffee is actually Phil's beans is it yeah because you made I, it huh you made it for me I did I did I have a new espresso machine that I got myself as a housewarming gift wow. and so I've been learning to do latte art I made you a sea animal on purpose <laughs> yeah it was a really good looking <laughs> turtle with a fucked up neck yeah I, I was inspired I saw TMNT last night so <laughs> <laughs> um, I made a team <laughs> but the Phil's news is that the original location is closing. Oh. It makes me sad. The I, Obama. Yeah, twenty on Twenty Fourth Street, Twenty Fourth and Folsom, that where I'll dox myself. I used to live right there on that corner. Would walk over to Phil's every day, type a little video script, ignore my work at Patreon, then no, would go down the street to the Patreon office, dude, ignore my work it. at Patreon, export a video. Don't say that, don't, they, they, oh, okay, no, cool. sorry. I would uh, badmouth Jack Conti <laughs> no, on no, the no, video. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Uh, leak the leak the source code. No, dude. Wait, it's a bad <laughs> idea. What I feel like. Okay, no. Uh, <laughs> Long day before coffee. Bro. Yeah, you do a lot. Yeah, no, it home, it's midnight. Awesome, <laughs> well, that's just the power of fills, dude. They make those beans extra strong. Um, yeah, it's it's closing. Apparently, I was like asking. I do know some people who work there, just like through the years, who don't work there anymore. I was like, what's the tea? What happened? Apparently, they didn't renew the lease. I don't know, but it's been around for so long that I remember like getting in a an uber like probably to work from one of those fills and that guy was uh, the guy was like oh yeah i grew up around here this fills we used to come here and play on the computers because they would have <laughs> computers that you could use and and back in the 90s you like could it, like it wasn't the, you, you go to the fills you go yeah, to like instead of the local com. library yeah. yeah one of those like it's, uh oval backed imax yeah <laughs> yeah that's that like guy was in, double uh, lift yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This used to all be orange groves <laughs> yeah. with IMAX. Oh my God. Um, Zezima himself played there. Uh, but yeah, so apparently it's closing and that's the end of an era. It closes in October. I read this on Mission Local, uh, a website I haven't checked since I lived in the Mission as a local in San Francisco. Ignoring your work. Yeah. Um, you can just do a like a like a way tougher version than like the Ted in uh, Eddie video where you go to every fills now mm. before it closes. Oh, that's a good idea. Going to every closed fills. <laughs> going to every in only the, the closed ones. <laughs> we went to one fills. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> I went to see um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie last night with Eddie, and uh, and Chrissy and Tony and Isabel, and um, 
Eddie bought my tickets, but he bought them separately and it didn't show up in his app. And then we were at the front and he was trying to explain it to the guy. And the guy goes, honestly, for the Rainforest Cafe, I'll Hell believe yeah. you. Nice. And, uh, and it made me sad because I was supposed to be in the Rainforest Cafe video, but I got COVID. Wow. So, and now they have this like little adventure without yeah. you in it. Yeah. yeah. We talk about it a lot. Wow. Yeah. 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 Cause it's like one of the most impactful videos on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and before people don't remember yeah. before that, Eddie did the Morbius video and I went to go see Morbius at the, that same AMC. No one, yeah. I it just means yeah, no nothing. Cares. I keep bringing I it up. No one, I just keep trying. <laughs> it just means less than nothing. I someone say, please. Person, yeah. Well, Notice I saw your, your video on, it was seen by someone huge. Oh yeah. I was literally, say, I was going to make <laughs> yeah. a joke that Post Malone canceled. So we had to bring you on. No, uh, <laughs> Weirdly, this morning I get a I get an email from my business manager of all people. <laughs> this is the way I found out my business manager listens to Joe Rogan. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, he said he says you're on. Um, Post Malone mentioned you on Joe Rogan 50 minutes in, and it was all like you know when you get an email that's all in the subject line. <laughs> yeah, it was like that, and then nobody. <laughs> and I was like, this has to be sent to the wrong person. And then lo and behold, I check and. Uh, yeah, they watched uh, or Post Malone mentioned the video, mentioned me by name. I thought that was very kind. Posty on point. Um, and then they did a Jamie pull that up and they pulled up the video. And it's like me and BB like doing, I don't know, the, one of the bits about the metaverse. I don't know, it was very surreal. Um, and I don't know about you, but I don't like watching people talk about me. Oh, the exact opposite. Oh, really? You love <laughs> yeah, it? no, I, I load it up. I'll load up everyone who's watched me. You know, and then I'll just, I'll just, it's Asmund Gold reacts to Mogul Mail. Oh, okay. And I'm just, and, and when Asmund talks and he pauses, I'm like, skip, 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 skip. Yeah. Right, <laughs> so right. I just, just want to watch the ad. Yeah. <laughs> Guy in the chair. <laughs> you're doing, um, you're doing like the research that like Facebook does when they bring in users and they scan their eyeballs and see like where they're retaining <laughs> yeah. on the video. I, well, I used to do this. It's, a, I think, a commentator thing because when I was commentating, mm -hmm. Smash, you yeah. couldn't like look at chat. And so I would right. always rewatch to see what was received well. Oh, oh yeah. And that was like an exercise in what is good, what is bad. Because right. you can't know while you're doing it. That's but, good. And that's good that you were doing VOD review for your commentating because you clearly wanted to improve. Yes. It's like shit. But <laughs> yeah, I, was, yeah. <laughs> I actually was really bad. I definitely saw some of your commentary before I knew who you were because I just like am a casual Smash fan because at Patreon, Jordan and Stans would just play Smash all the time. Mm -hmm. We and would I, also ignore our work, actually, was one of those. Yeah, it, was, I, it sounds like Patreon is going in, into the shit. Look, the, yeah. uh, you nobody, was, they got rid of us quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were like, like, these guys are not paying attention to anything. We had to compromise and do this more embarrassing job. Um, <laughs> no, but... Uh, and, like, they would, like, go to Genesis and stuff and, like, during lunchtime be playing. And I think I just, like, as a casual fan, started watching Melee. And I... It's like, I don't play the game. I'm like so bad at it, but I do enjoy watching it. Do you still play? Oh no, it's, it's the NFL. Okay. It's like, I'm, I'm at best, I uh, at my peak, I was like JV and then right. I hurt my knee or whatever. But you could have gone pro. I was you would have won fifth. state champs. Oh yeah, yeah of course. I'm I tired <laughs> actually was the thing. Yeah. Well, under rage. You yeah. know, I, I can't go do You're that You're over stuff. it. Um, did you watch Evo? Yeah, of course. Awesome. Dude, it was so sick. It was amazing. I. Didn't know half of what was going on in any of the games, mm -hmm. but I was rooting for Leffen and Strive, and then he fucking won. That's exactly what my experience was, and I, my my understanding was like, okay, the bar goes down when it's all the way down. That's good, and then they have like a little meter, and there's right. like the one meter. It's like they get to break out to combo breaker, yeah, and then the full one they get to go crazy. You know, I was so it, my understanding was so basic. I was like. Oh, right. Okay. So between rounds, they're like conserving meters so that like yeah. right before they lose, they can like try to, they can do something crazy. And then there are some pretty crazy plays. Leffen played really well. And the thing happened that happens in every fighting game where people say that the character that's winning is really yeah. busted. Yes. It, 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 and then the people who are responding are going, he's the only one in the top eight playing this character. What are you talking about? And it, then no one wants to hear it. Strive is just like, it's... I enjoy it again, too bad to play it now. It's just like not fun to play matchmaking. Loved it when it came out. It's a very, very, very well balanced game. Mm. Just notoriously well balanced. It's just, uh, I think a lot of the people commenting on it were like ride or die uh, melee players, or at least outside of that space. There's just and a they, lot of left and haters. There's too. no, so many. There's no zoning in melee. 
He tweets. I, a bunch of people were like, he, he's doing that thing with Sheik where he's just needling. Yeah. Look, Leffen just tweets a lot and and uh, enough that he he's developed a, maybe a equal amount of haters as he does fans. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, count I, me in the fan. I'm, I'm, a fan. I'm, I'm, a fan. I'm a fan. It's so weird too because I feel like it's my little secret mm-hmm. that I like. I'm because I'm watching the Twitch chat. And no one's having a good time. I'm secretly <laughs> like eating it up. You know, the only nice response I saw from any of his peers was Cody. Cody was so nice on that's, the stream. That's like me. I also and and you might hate me for this. Is uh, I'm I'm a secret, not secret, but I'm a hungry box <laughs> fan because of how much. Everybody hates him. We, did you watch the Emp Lemon documentary? I did, but that's why this no nope. No, no, this no. is a psyop. No, because I <laughs> you've like, been psyoped. The reason I like Hungry Box is because when I watched, I watched the doc when everybody else did, and I found out about H Box after that, and he was at the University of Florida, which is in my hometown. I was a massive Hungry Box fan. Yeah, because I played Jigglypuff and Smash, right. and then Hungry Box played Jigglypuff. And like him winning was like me believing it could be done. Right. right. Sure. And so anytime he would get crushed, I was like, maybe I should switch. Like right. Maybe right, it's right. just, it's impossible. So I'd always root for him. I met him at uh, this tournament called MVG Stand- uh, Sandstorm, a notoriously terrible okay. event uh, where the power went out during grand finals, <laughs> mm. a whole slew of shit. They printed <laughs> they out do? shirts that said Phoenix, Arizona, and Phoenix was spelled wrong. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. And they just put a sticky note over that spelling error because it was like like Phoenix and uh, and they kept selling them. Uh, but anyway, I'm at this tournament and I'm subscribed to Hungrybox and I go up to him and I, I, I am the problem here, but I go up to him <laughs> and I say, I'm like, what's up Hungrybox? And he's like, yo, what's up? And I'm like, I uh, I subscribed to your channel last week. Do you remember me? <laughs> and, he, and he sits there with like the blankest stare and he's like, and, and, and before he can reply, I'm like, you don't remember. And then he's he's like, as I'm walking away, he's like, no, no, dude, I like I actually remember. I was like, no, you don't. <laughs> I went home and I unsubscribed from him that day. <laughs> so funny. He'll remember that. No, I uh, I also didn't. I mean, I had a nice enough interaction with him. I think I saw him at TwitchCon or something, and I was like, yo, dude, what's up or whatever, because I think we're mutuals mm-hmm. online. Uh, and then he was. It was like. He was about to, fl- he flew into TwitchCon for one day and then he was flying to a tournament the yeah. next day. And uh, I was like, good luck tomorrow. And he was like, thanks. You've always been a, you've always been a good supporter. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he talks like a president to like an like a 11th grader. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, man. Yeah, he's like describing Coco Melon. <laughs> yeah. Just leaning down. The, the hopscotch bunny went bip bop pop. <laughs> oh my God. How'd you get into commentating? Uh, it was because I couldn't play. It's like, you yeah. know, those who can't play commentate. Right. It's those who can't t- uh, do teach or whatever. Yeah. I learned that from School of Rock. That's like a quote in that movie. Yes. Uh, in those who can't teach, teach gym or something. That's the yeah. next line. Nice. I've seen it too many and times. Ned Schneebly kills everyone. Yeah, yeah. exactly. With gym. <laughs> yeah. He uses his gym based powers. No, but that was it. I, I got into it uh, and I got like a little better at it, but I was always stuck in pools. Mm-hmm. I was relegated to the, the more minor stuff. Right. And then uh, it introduced me to streaming. Mm-hmm. And then that's kind of where I found out about streaming was from, yeah. from Smash. Yeah. Did you like blow up during the pandemic or like when did it really like happen for you where you were like, this is like going to be the thing? Yeah, I, I, I don't know when because I think like people blow up and then they blow up again and they yeah, blow up again yeah and they're always like emerging and, right uh, I agree. and so i don't think there's any finite point where it was like ah oh, bam there you know for a lot of people it's the subathon okay but yeah. i think much before then like during covid uh i had played in pog champs the mm. chess tournament yeah, yeah, yeah the one that you just competed yeah, yeah, in actually yeah, yeah, yeah. which well, we'll get to talk about a little bit okay <laughs> <laughs> Divorce keys. You got the goat. I gotta. I gotta. I got my work cut out. Have you me. tried to read that, by the way? Uh, I started. Impossible. Yeah. Uh, it we, is. They say you should only read it if you're an international master. Zug Zwang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was it. Yeah. Wait. Wh- what did that mean again, bro? You can't whip out that book. It's a Zug Zwang. <laughs> Uh, Zug Zwang is a German word, which yeah. means you are in a position where uh, no moves are good for you. Yeah. And uh. basically, whoever has to make the move is going to make a losing move. And so it's kind of about like tempo. It's like it happens in Connect Four a lot. It's kind mm. of a Zug Zwang. So Whoa, no, actually, exactly right. It's Zug Zwang-esque. Yeah. What's Zug Zwang? 
Zugzwang esque. Oh, oh Zugzwang esque. Yeah. Ah, yeah. If you need me to define it, I could do it. <laughs> You're a little bit of a Zugzwang esque. That reminds me of uh, that. I don't know if you guys watched a lot of Family Guy like I did, but um, so I have much. a twisted, sick sense of humor. There's yeah. that. There's that line where on the TV they go, "Oh, that's very shallow and pedantic." Oh yeah. And then I when agree. I was, shallow and pedantic. When I was a kid, I didn't. I like just would say that. And I didn't even fucking know what it meant. <laughs> My first ever YouTube upload was a Family Guy funny clip. Oh, Hell that's yeah. funny. It was like uh, I the Blu-ray for the Star Wars one. Mm -hmm. They did a screen reading of or, or like whatever you call that. They, they read the oh, like a table oh read? Yeah, yeah yeah like a table read yeah they, they did yeah. a table read of the script and then I just ripped it from my DVD and uploaded it on YouTube got like 100k views I and we're doing it to this day come on baby that's I, what reacting is now yeah, yeah. For sure. don't <laughs> even get me started of, speaking of reacting no no <laughs> <laughs> um the, there I guess for people who aren't familiar there's a there's a discourse occurring right now capital d it's Discos. so funny by the way you said for people who aren't familiar as we went into the nitty-gritty of leffen's evo win and guilty gear <laughs> yeah. which way less people know about yeah. and then you're like okay so there's this guy xqc yep. <laughs> if you've heard of him yeah exactly imagine uh, uh streaming you don't know what he's because saying. i i wouldn't even attempt to try to explain <laughs> any of the shit we yeah. were talking about before but now it's something that like you're an average person could understand i was putting faith in the audience on that one <laughs> yeah. on the plus the Please five understand second FGC. yeah i also yeah zugs long as well yeah. um, oh do you know i can explain he's a long oh no yeah, yeah, could you, could you sort, yeah it's when you move around oh yeah okay um so yeah i guess i mean the history of reacting goes back to this like fair use um <laughs> fair like use start to a youtube that, essay yeah age three um wikipedia that, yeah, <laughs> reacting we react all do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah someone says something you react to it okay so xqc uh big huge streamer 100 million dollar kick deal man uh, is recently under fire for underreacting um to the point of freebooting creators content uh, and then posting that content online for profit um he's accused of you know filling time on his streams by by doing like super low effort content people like hassan and people who stream for long amounts of time uh a lot of that you know, time can be spent watching YouTube videos and reacting. A lot of my time is spent watching YouTube videos. A lot of my time is spent commentating on like things. So uh, it's, there's nothing like inherently wrong with it, but the XQC drama comes from, you know, him just like walking away during like a small creator's video or something like that. I'm not entire, I'm like not super keyed into it, but uh, I wanted to get your, like, what's your take on that sitch? He's more like a uh, martyr's not the right word. He's like the poster boy though. Mm -hmm. He's like the poster boy yeah. for what is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody understands like there is a line in reacting yeah. that people are then like, that's too far. Right. Yep. And, and many people cross that line. Yeah. But he is the biggest and, right. and the one who crossed it the most, like maybe obviously because he's yeah. out of his chair. The, yeah. There's a couple of very easy point to non nuanced reasons. It's an issue. Like he's uploading the entire VOD of him watching it as opposed to just highlight clips. Right. Which third party channels do with Hassan stuff, but he doesn't do it directly. Right. If it happens and the creator's bothered by it, Hassan makes, you know, a request. I'm referencing Hassan because he's like the third member of that discourse after the yes. fucking. He gets the uh, most discourses. He, he, yeah. he, he'll get Not on purpose. He gets a lot of discourses. <laughs> and he does, like, I watch a fair amount of Hassan and he definitely does leave the chair and, like, <laughs> you know, come back or, like, he's like, oh, I was watching it on my phone or whatever. <laughs> and it's like. He does that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it, it's not something exclusive to them. I think many streamers do this. It's it's part of streaming culture. I do this when I stream and I'm not even a regular streamer. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think like everyone will defend their streamer. They'll be like, my streamer pauses actually a lot, like too much. <laughs> oh, well, they almost pause too much. Like, can right. I say it? I wish pause they would react me. more. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't watch this video myself. <laughs> <Stop pausing. laughs> yeah. uh, and and it's what's weird is how, you know, still wild wild west twitches or mm -hmm. any streaming site is right because they've been reacting to you know anime in the past movies in the past movies the super bowl that's kick obviously yes but, and it's yeah. a different platform than youtube so it's a lot harder to detect when it happens mm -hmm. and like you know copyright strike it or take it down 
Yeah. Uh, and it seems to only really be an issue or maybe much more of an issue when you take that and then you bring it to the platform that it originated on YouTube. Right. And you're like taking from that pool of people. Right. Because it's then it's you're kind of cannibalizing the uh, potential reach and audience that that video may have had, mm -hmm. especially because the, you know, packaging is so much on YouTube, like the title and the thumbnail is so much and the react thumbnail and title of a video is so similar to the original video that it like the narrative that it could be taking away real like a um, potential audience i don't think is i think it's a fact that it takes away some potential audience and then the argument is like how much and then like how much good is it doing versus how much bad is it doing because is i mean yeah net more viewers overwhelmingly yeah especially for smaller creators i mean i know true crime jcs etc is from seeing reacts of them because i don't have like the emotional right. palette to watch one of those without somebody butting yeah in, i need like, someone to hold my <laughs> yeah. hand someone rem reminding me that there's like ponies and cute stuff yeah in the world, yeah when it's just like and the baby got eaten and <laughs> for sure yeah. Like, yeah jesus christ and this yeah. is where jenna knew that she had murdered seven men and would be in jail forever <laughs> yeah and it's like fuck and then somebody else going damn that's crazy yeah. like, it is crazy yeah okay cool i'm glad someone else is on my side i love those clips whenever or like uh, those videos whenever they just go hard propaganda out of nowhere like this is actually a method that uh, police detectives will often use that a bunch of libs think is torture, <laughs> whatever. But it's actually so goaded and epic. I watched one of those channels and recently they've been like, actually this person's going completely off book and this guy sucks actually <laughs> at interrogating. <laughs> like, Wait, go on. <laughs> yeah, his name's Josh, he lives here. Yeah. <laughs> He's ugly, he's busted. Um, it is a really hard thing to tease apart because I can give a personal example uh, of, of a creator I know, Gunner TV, shout out Gunner, small, was a super small creator, one to 10K subs. And Charlie started reacting to his videos and was posting like stream cut downs, light stream cut downs of his videos on his channel. But the way that he treated it was like, oh, Gunner's got a new video? Guys, let's check out Gunner's new video. I'm gonna check out this new vid. It, it, what's up guys? <laughs> what's up gamers? Um, And then Gunner grew and like now Gunner has a couple hundred thousand subscribers, you know? Mm -hmm. And he would not deny that Charlie watching his videos and essentially like freebooting his videos did have an important part in putting him in front of a huge set of eyeballs that then when there were new videos coming out, there was a, addressable audience for YouTube to recommend those videos to because Charlie's not going to react to every video. So like that's not in defense of XQC, right? Because not every creator needs to be like brought up and, and, and for a, creators of a certain size or who creators who put videos out once per month or once per couple of months, this could be their big this could be huge for their income. This could be huge for their career to like not have anybody reacting to their video to, for it to stand alone. Do you know the argument against that? What the argument against that is that you're basically now playing a game where it's like the big creator is the one lifting someone from the crowd to like get a lot of views or subscribers by, you know, maybe reacting to it and shouting that person out. Yeah. In the same way, like a billionaire can mm -hmm. philanthropically pick one uh, venereal disease that they yeah, want to yeah. solve <laughs> in a country right. as opposed to like what would the general audience want if that video didn't exist because mm -hmm. those views might go somewhere else. Right. Uh, is is the general argument, which which I think has some legs, also has some flaws to it. Yeah, I don't think it's I, I, I do think it's a super great. I think it's being treated because of how black and white the XUC situation is. People are painting with a broad brush about the entire argument, which I don't think is. I think the 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 whole space is particularly nuanced. I think it's a, a dumb discourse that surrounds and like a, a moot point. There is no like. There are no winners in this conversation, just as there never is. The there are. Times it's happened. People talking about it. People yeah. talking about it, getting views, getting impressions. The fact that it's about people that are fun to talk about is why it's being talked yes. about. This is like not an interesting discourse if it's just about boring people. The strategy for like 10 plus years to deal with reactors is to shame them and hope that somehow quells reactors, which doesn't work, obviously. Otherwise, Sniper Wolf wouldn't be one of the biggest channels on the website. Yeah. And anyone who just like shoves their shame aside or anyone who is maybe like clawing on their way up, mm. who's not noticed, 
who's like, okay, well, you know, XQC got taken down, but like, I'll go. It's like, oh, you see Jewel fall and then Elf bars, like, oh, my turn. Uh, that the same thing happens, I think, for reactors. Yeah. So the shaming strat doesn't work. I don't think you want a universe where somebody goes to court and then draws like a hard line in the sand on what is and isn't okay. No. Because I think that'll take down a lot of like the freedoms that exist on the website for I viewers. I mean, and by definition, fair use isn't a line in the sand. It's like something yeah. that needs, that line needs to be on a case by case basis in court based on the tenets of the doctrine. And most people wouldn't be able to afford that anyway. Yeah, not at all. And that's so I, Or I, the time. I've, I've advocated for for YouTube to give the tools to the creators who are clearly like not happy that their stuff's being reacted to and that they're losing money out on it to be able to claim that money back. Cause they, mm. you can't do that right now. You, I feel like I've been like my monetization for videos before has been routed to other people. I feel. Yeah. Like you can get claims, <laughs> right? But usually the claiming feature is exclusive to corporations, music mm. companies, or, or like other groups An individual creator. Like I've looked, I tried, I was like, can I claim yeah. someone? Sure. You have three options. If someone's using your stuff, cause YouTube shows you, they're very accurate in showing like this person's using a hundred percent of your video. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. See I've seen that. Yeah. And then you have three options, which is one, like close it out. Stop thinking about it. Two, send them an email and be like, hey, hey, and then three, send them a copyright takedown and give them a strike, Sure, which is like- It's which so is confrontational. Like, yeah, it's like do nothing, do basically nothing, or do nuclear option. Yeah. Which yeah. is not like, you know, especially if it is a smaller creator, even like medium sized, confrontation could destroy their lives. Oh yeah. Let alone destroy the channel that they're trying to save by doing it in the first place. Yeah, if a channel with 10K strikes somebody with a couple million, like maybe there's a universe where they get some public support on Twitter or something, but most of the time like that, they're st they still don't want to deal with that couple yeah. million subscriber fan base. It would 100% yeah. rely on the target. It yeah. would have to be a, there would have to be like this consensus. XQC would have to kill someone with his car that morning. Yeah. And then like everyone would be like, oh yeah, actually, You'd have to wait until he just bad. finished a gambling stream. <laughs> <laughs> just watch Dark Knight Rises. Time it perfectly. In general, I think that YouTube needs more tools for stuff like that because I've been in a situation where I accidentally doxed myself, or no, not doxed someone else in a, <laughs> like it was like not a dox, it was like a phone number or sure. something. And it was disembodied, like you couldn't tell who it was from, but I still like would cut it out of the thing. And then someone re-uploaded it, including that piece. Mm -hmm. And so, and I don't think they were doing so maliciously, but my tools for getting in contact with that person, asking them to trim that part out or remove it or whatever, like we're very, very limited. And well, I mean, it's weird that there's no in product way to communicate with another creator. Yeah. That is very well, they strange. got rid of messages in like 2008, <laughs> <laughs> which they were dog shit, uh, yeah. but I, I did used to use them. I used them too. Yeah. We should start using, uh, posting videos again where it's like re this video. <laughs> yeah. Replying. Yeah, it's like quote retweeting. Yeah. Me too. I can't believe that existed. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy that and th those would go viral. Like um, I saw it a lot with song covers back in the day on YouTube. Like somebody would do a song cover, reply to another person's song cover. It's kind of like, um, on the old internet when you would like link to your friends pages and stuff mm -hmm. you'd be like hey check out my friend he makes dragon ball z videos or uh, content i've not enjoyed the internet more since like 2002. that's the most fun i've had on the internet oh two sure. i would i would argue oh, yeah, a bit like later on there but yeah i do think the internet i i think it went from like here's cool web pages that do cool things to like just browse these five social media sites and do mm. like cycle through them yeah i've smiled more on new grounds than i have on twitter for sure <laughs> that's definitely correct but you also like trick yourself into thinking it's valuable to spend time on twitter yeah. and you've never tricked yourself into thinking it's valuable to spend time on new grounds right yeah especially in the space that we work in there is a trick to be like well i need to know what's going on this is universal i think people yeah. go to twitter and they're like oh i'm informing myself mm -hmm. and it's like okay there's a bombing in kuwait and then justin bieber's canceled what did you learn <laughs> something happened something kicked in this last week this week it's wednesday when we're recording this i generally don't check screen time but i was curious I have an average of 16 minutes a day on Twitter this week. Whoa. Is I, it because of the X transition? Something about, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of it. I'm so sick of seeing an interesting like take or a joke and having to scroll through 50 comments that mm. are all blue chicks going, um, this, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me likey. And ju I'm just like, I can't do this. Dude, yeah, I saw there was this uh, group of ants who were carrying a gold chain and then I go to the replies and it's a blue check and it's like, wow, must be an ant eek. 
<laughs> and then that guy, you go to that guy's profile and he's like, wow, Elon just sent me $100,000 for all my impressions that I get. Um, thanks Dude, for making the website better. I'm yeah. having so much fun. Uh, Pizzagate is real, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yeah, paying for impressions is dangerous. Yeah. I, I actually don't. Those numbers seem inflated to me that people are getting paid. Oh, yeah. Well, by inflated by them or inflated by Twitter? Like, I feel like it cannot be that as valuable to Twitter to oh. pay for those impressions as they are, especially yeah, how, for how game, gamified it is. Uh, because you just like post really incendiary stuff and then you get more engagement. I don't think they have nearly enough advertiser dollars. I guess the argument is that you only get paid out if you're a Twitter blue subscriber and the people who are posting the screenshots are like the top, you know, 0.1%. Mm -hmm. And so everyone who might be subscribing to Twitter blue to get paid is basically like, like imagine if you had to pay 10 bucks a month to get paid on YouTube, how many people would pay for that? Right. Right, for sure. Yeah, and it's like it still doesn't add up to any amount of revenue. But then the 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 theory, I guess, on their end is that they are um, paying people who are in earnest going to be creating value. Yes. But I think that the same thing exists on YouTube, but there's real advertiser dollars that are funding oh, yeah. the mm -hmm. money where it's like, I just don't believe that's the case for, for Twitter. It's certainly not sustainable right now. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm cu I am curious to see the journey. It's just the product is now draining to use in a way that I, at least, I don't know. I felt embarrassed to be a really active Twitter user, but at least the moment to moment it was fun. And I got the illusion of feeling like I was informing myself. And now the For You doesn't show me anything I'm actually interested in. Doesn't even nominally inform me about stuff. Every time I see a trend, it's like, Hassan is trending. And I click it and he just went live. And it's just like, Hassan is trending. Oh, right. Uh, for me, it's, huh. I don't get why people watch Hassan. He just eats and watches videos. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's content creators. Uh, it's like, they just don't understand the, like what a parasocial relationship is. Uh, I don't get the dark night. He's just doing this fighting crime. I get on Twitter, uh, a bunch of like fights and like horrible, like, <laughs> like things. It's like, watch this person get their ass beat. Oh Crazy yeah. clips. Oh yeah. Crazy yeah. clips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vids that go hard and then it's like four pretty funny clips and then a guy dying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that goes hard. <laughs> yeah. It's like I've had to more in my life, you know, when you um, pull up something on stream that you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. That might get me like in trouble. I've done that just in my private life because of the <laughs> stuff that shows up on my Twitter home feed. I'm like, I don't need to see that right now. Yeah. I've, I've become more sensitized because mm. I was very desensitized when I was young. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you just hear a name and you're like, yeah, two girls, one cup. And then you're like, what's the hammer one? And you look mm. all this up and yeah. you just slowly become more and more desensitized. But yep. as I've gotten older, I look at it and it's like, this is horrible. Mm -hmm. This is this is going to ruin my day. Yeah. I cannot watch this. I, I, yeah, I feel it's like the same way I feel about dairy. I'm just like, <laughs> I, could, I shouldn't have eaten it when I was younger, but I, just, I was just fine yeah. having my stomach hurt. And oh. now I'm just like, okay, but we should all yeah, you, look out. You're recently, I'm so sad about this. Yeah, you, you gave up. Ludwig, you are recently a lactose intolerant person yeah a how did you how did you find out what was your journey well okay it it started a long time ago actually he's okay. crying no oh my <laughs> God. i was I, I i became an early almond milk enjoyer okay uh because i was ignorant to the to the environmental stuff and then when i found out i was still like it's so low calorie though yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh and i hit like a stinky 200 pounds and i was like i want to come down from this yeah uh and so i was big almond milk guy one day I'm streaming and there's like an armchair. It's like an office chair. And I'm like leaning into the armchair to pick something off on the ground. And it's like really low and I just keep going. And then I do like a final third, like big push to grab right. it. I get it and then I hear, and then I get back up and I like continue streaming. And then like like an hour in a stream, I'm like, uh, and I'm like, that's weird. And my ribs hurt. I didn't click for like four hours. I fractured my rib cage. What? Just by leaning over. And, and that blew my mind that my ribs could break on what I thought was one of the like lightest right. impacts. Uh, and so right then I was like, big milk was right. <laughs> big milk was on the right page. But yeah, my bones are too weak because all this oh, almond okay. milk I'm drinking. Right, I was, I was yeah. failing to see the connection, which means that the years of got milk propaganda have failed me. Yes. And so I instantly started drinking milk. Mm -hmm. I got right back on the dairy train. Right. And and I was I was on that for a while. <laughs> this almond milk has made me frail. Yes. Yeah. That, that was my thought. Right. Broke my rib. It takes you know how long it takes to heal? 
I have no idea. It's like six months and you can't do anything. Oh. Like like you can't do anything about it. Right. You just have to suffer. Yeah. You just have to drink There's no milk. cast for your ribs. No. Yeah. You have to drink so much milk. You have to drink so much. <laughs> uh, and then recently I've been drinking drinking milk, mm -hmm. as I do. Right. And uh, and in my, in, can we get graphic in the show? Uh, please. My shits are what like a elephant toothpaste experiment. <laughs> I don't. I only understood some of those words. My, my elephant? They come out like an elephant toothpaste. Oh. They, oh. God. It's not fun. Yeah. And I, and I was like, it's the coffee or it's the milk. Right. So I isolated the variables. Yes. And I've been it. having coffee with, with substitutes mm -hmm. and it come out fine. Yeah. And so I think I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> Just choose between your stomach and your bones. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, so... Uh, yeah, so you're upset about it. Yeah, you miss milk. Well, I I still you're have like, ice I'm cream. Still drinking it. <laughs> yeah, okay. And that's been fine. Okay. I think it's just like milk. I think it's like like hearty. Because well, I don't know, man. I also believe that if you stop drinking milk, you become lactose intolerant. You are taking a tolerance break. Right. I think so. I think it's a real thing. I I drink so, I drink so much milk, and I still do drink milk, even though I am. I'm not as lactose intolerant, but I I just get gassy. Mm. I get really bad gas. I was gonna say, do you understand your options moving forward? Like, are you familiar with lactate? It's to punish myself and enjoy it, or to not punish myself and not enjoy it. There's like oh, medication. I don't do that. Oh, okay. Nice. I don't trust it. Oh. That's why you're anti-vax, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Right, right, right. Pure blood? Do you, so you gotta get a jab for this lactate? <laughs> <laughs> just a tablet. <laughs> uh, what, is, what are the, what are the, how does it work? Um, well, enzymes. Yeah, so there's an enzyme lactase mm. that you cannot, like when you're lactose intolerant, you cannot process in your body. And so like lac I get a milk called lactate where they just took that out and so it just tastes the same, but it doesn't have the thing that makes you grumbly. Oh, you get a milk. I thought you were talking about the little Well, there's both. So, okay. so that's what I do. But then there's also these lactate tablets. I could go grab you some uh, that if either of us are going real ham on some dairy, we might pop a lactate beforehand. And so, it works? Yeah. I mean, relatively. Maybe. I, it's the funniest <laughs> thing, because with the lactate, it's, you know, the milk. I'm like, okay, well, it's not in it. I'll just have it. Yeah. With the pill? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know if how I just the pill works. Out. I don't know if I, because like, take it with your first bite of food. I'm like, okay, if I, did it just not work because I did the second one? Or did it Hang never on. work? Or was I just going to shit myself anyway right. for whatever reason today? I don't think I trust it. I It's a risky proposition. Do you also, mean like you don't want to enjoy it so that you're not eating too much ice cream? You want uh, that to be a penalty? Hey, you, wait, I haven't been punished with ice cream. Look, here's the thing. I might not even be lactose intolerant. This might be appropriation. This is the dirty truth. It might just be that I the caffeine ran through me badly a few times and I overreacted because the ice cream hasn't done me too wrong. He's done it. Lactate, enjoy dairy again, fast act. All the guests get this, by the way. Yeah. I I went for one, you know, appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I, I, you know what I'm, I'm worried about? I feel like a conspiracy theorist. What about my gut biome? How much do you already know about your gut biome? It's one of the best. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> are you doing prebiotics? Or are you doing? Oh, I do, I do the whole not. I have a I think I have a healthy ecosystem in there. OK, I have based I have, on the diarrhea or like some other. I will. They say colors. your gut biome controls like what? Half, half How many subs? Brain. You have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bigger number, it's better biome. It's been going so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, people think XQC's deal is dollars. It's actually like intense gut health. Yeah, hundred thousand. Oh, dude, can pound a gallon, <laughs> easy. Uh, no, I have I have such a fierce lack of knowledge on food, but I'm very passionate about what mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and so I was talking about it on stream. I was like, yeah, I have an idea of like some some foods are god foods, and some foods aren't god foods. And they're like, what's a god food? I'm like, vegetables. It's a god food. Fair. Can't go wrong with vegetables. True. And they're like rice. I'm like, no. Not bad for you. you. Yeah. yeah. Rice is bad for you. Which sucks. It's like not fair. Yeah. Uh, and and so I have this list and I'm like salmon. They're like mercury poisoning. I'm like not worried about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you have to eat so much. Yeah. Yeah. To worry about that. But then rice, I feel like there's a difference between white rice, brown rice, you know? I anti-brown rice. 
Anti brown rice. It tastes icky. It has, for okay. God food, it has to taste good. It's oh, the color. Okay. You don't like the color of it. Oh, so you like the taste? <laughs> no, of I wouldn't say that. All, no, all no, no, oh yeah, you just hate I, brown. No, no, no. I close my eyes when I eat rice. Regardless. Oh yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you did say that before. I've heard you say that before. The way you yeah. describe brown rice was um, you're happy for it to be around, but <laughs> yeah. it is scary. <laughs> yeah, you want the rice separated, and you want nothing to do with it separate. I would, <laughs> okay, I would okay. keep all the rice in the plate together. Oh wow. Oh my god. Yeah, this is incredible. Yeah, I actually like mixed rice. Thank you. We all applaud. We do half brown, half. White. Yeah. Right. I, actually, I always ask. They always say no. I'm like, ugh. They, we don't do that. This is good. Oh, I so have you a, hate bread. <laughs> I have a dream, actually. <laughs> you could believe I'm it. I'm not going to walk out, but I would. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, no, I think you were saying you like Black Panther earlier. Thank <laughs> you yeah, so yeah, much, I do, dude. I do this uh, sign everywhere. It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah big Lord confused. of Gorenson fan, too. Um, what a hilarious period of time that was to work in tech with mostly white people and just like, I just saw Black Panther. <gasps> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's like cool from like a representation standpoint and everything, but it is at the end of the day a Marvel movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's still uh, a cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sell Black Panther. <laughs> yeah. He's just, just a cop that's also the president. It's like people are talking to you like you had something to do with the movie. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, wow. I had no idea. That's <laughs> tough. Like, I that am not tough. the Black Panther. <laughs> uh, can I tell you a uh, secret? Please. I've never seen it. Hey. Put her here. Yeah. I've quit on Marvel. Too scary. That's okay. I quit on Marvel a long time ago and and it's now it's basically like Spider Man only. Good exception. Yeah. Good exception. I, I consider it different enough. And I think yeah. Sony does a good enough job. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the easiest thing to hate. This is like the most lukewarm take. Yeah, I I don't dislike a Marvel movie, but most people who talk negatively about Marvel feel like they're being forced to watch the movies. I was. Oh, okay. I, I guess my watched at one point for sure. Yeah. So I was invited to a screening of Thor Love and Thunder mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was something shrouded set up. Mm -hmm. So we got this whole theater. He had a bunch of friends come out. Uh, me and Cutie go and, and and we're sitting in the back and like the movie starts. I'm like, you know, I I saw the first Thor. This could be fun. Right. Uh, and in like 10 minutes in, I'm like, oof. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna this be tough. This is the Taika one that nobody liked, right? Yeah. Yes, okay, the most rough. recent one. Uh, and I, but I couldn't leave. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. I couldn't shroud who got this theater, right? Who's invited me? So I couldn't leave, and so I wait for it to end, and I'm ready to commiserate. You know, the moment of that movie is ends. a sad thing to be in a movie waiting for it to end. Yes. Yeah. And and I and I and I just I just thought it was it tried to be funny and did not make me laugh mm. once, and that was its failure. I just didn't laugh. Yeah. There is something like. <clears throat> I feel like people always talk about fatigue with Marvel movies, which to some extent I guess I can align with, but every single time there's then a great superhero movie, everybody yeah. is instantly rejuvenated. The issue for me, I, whenever I watch a Marvel movie now, I'm used to seeing something I like or something that was kind of mid. Mm. Doctor Strange 2 is one of the worst films I've ever seen in my entire life. They're just dropping stinkers. It's distractingly bad and <laughs> I, it's, there's single digit number of people, including myself, that don't like it. And Everyone's not, and not, it's, it's not fine. even bad in like, let's make a commentary YouTube video about it, how it's right. cute and funny and coy. Trash. It's just bad. Yeah. And so that's how I felt about Thor. The moment it ended, I was like ready to commiserate, talk to everybody, be like, that sucked. So I go I go up and like go to Shroud. I'm like, what'd you think? He's like, loved it. Oh, and I was like, oh, dude, me too. Yeah. 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 You can't hear there. The Shroud, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just wasn't my cup. It wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. I also really loved how loud it was and how many jokes they did that didn't <laughs> land. That shit was fire. Oh, that's funny. How was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I liked it. I don't want to spoil too much about it. Um, the fuck are you going to spoil? It's four turtles. They fight crime. Well, choose it up. I, How I, old are they? Well, you know what it is? <laughs> I don't want to give my opinion to people and then have them like adopt it. Mm, sure. Does that make sense? Um, but but I will. Uh, <laughs> there there were so, too woke. <laughs> like one of the things that does too well. Too woke. Uh, Eddie told me that the. Um, the, it's like four teenagers who play the turtles, which is cute. And then they record it together, which is non-traditional for mm -hmm. voice acting. Um, uh, usually they don't do ensemble recording. So that is cute. Like they have good chemistry. They do a lot of talking over each other, but it feels like very true to like how teenagers would be. Uh, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, uh, and then some other guy, sorry, uh, wrote the script. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, splinter. they're the like, famous writing partners, you know? I believe it was Raphael. It is so full of pop culture references that oh. it almost took me out a little bit of the movie because 
they were making they were making references to Marvel. They were making mm. like at one point the kid is like talking about like his Riz, and then I learned that was an ad lib line and from a teenager, and I was like, okay, now I'm okay with it. But there was this like kind of push and pull where I couldn't tell like what was from the writers versus what was like improvised, and that intent ended up mattering to me because for some reason I could imagine like Seth Rogen writing a line. <laughs> And that like could be cringy, but if a teenager says it, then it's fine. I don't know. But overall, it's very sweet. It's very cute. It feel it felt shorter than I was expecting, um, because the movie started wrapping up, and I was like, "It's over." Like I wasn't expecting that. I don't feel like we had a real, you know, end of act two kind of like all is all is lost right. moment. And maybe that's just me metagaming the hero's journey into movies. Right. But uh, but overall, it was like a fun experience i didn't love it as much as everyone else and it was that thing where i was like oh what'd you think and oh, loved it and i was like okay but, yeah, but. i mean i liked it i did like it i'm curious to like i do this thing now where one of my favorite things about watching a movie is like watching uh the 50 easter eggs you missed in this movie like oh. i don't know why i just like it's like brain candy like and spending more time so I watching done dark souls movie. lore videos than playing yeah, yeah oh when i watched movie. oppenheimer uh a full day of World War II documentaries for me. Me yeah. too. I Oppenheimer right to theories. Wikipedia. Yeah, it was. Yeah. What did they do with the bomb? I'm, I'm like, wait, it was real? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. This what did they crazy. do? This is crazy. I'm so glad they didn't use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's crazy. Oh my bad. God. It's like not in the movie, right? They don't. They're, there's No, they put it in. No, they put it in. They, they no, explode. Not that, oh. They, they put the Trinity test in, but they don't oh, put right. like. Uh, they just dropping they, the bomb. They talk about it on the radio. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah. uh, you do a cartoon voice. <laughs> There's a bunch of like science. Oppenheimer has the funniest amount of like sciencey Easter eggs where they'll just reference like scientists. Where if you're a nerd, you're like, oh Fermi, <laughs> oh Niels Bohr, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Swing, swing. Uh, there's a really <laughs> good. Have you have you seen Oppenheimer? No, I don't. I don't want to see it at all. That's fine. You don't have to see it. There's a funny, almost Marvel level. Um, cameo at the very end of the movie where oh I might know what that yeah, is yeah 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 where there's this um uh, this this guy who's like up for a senate seat uh, who was an enemy of Oppenheimer essentially uh, a guy that destroys bombs he, he doesn't he doesn't get a senate confirmation and he was like who are the people who who voted no and it was like there's this there's a senator who's trying to make a name for himself Kennedy John F. Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, everybody's like, <gasps> and I'm like, why did that? That's like so random. Yeah. Like so His whole things. head is together. Because it's true. It's true. Yeah. But Which is cool. It's cool, but the wink and the, it like felt like a right. wink and a nod. Right. You it know was. what I mean? Where it's like uh, uh, Iron Man, basically, was yeah. like the guy who said no. I Well, that took me out less than Josh Peck showing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So. Yeah, that was crazy. Would you watch it again? It's three hours long. That's what, I, I'm in a dilemma. Because okay. you were in Pog Champs Five, yeah, yeah, the chess yeah. event that I ran, and uh, and Connor Sea Dog, who yeah. lives in Japan, right, got to the finals. Okay, cool. So he has to fly to America for two days, and he has yeah. to go right back to Japan, and uh, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I'm coming. Do you want to watch Oppenheimer with me? Because it's not out in Japan, yeah, and it yeah, probably yeah. won't come out in Japan. Yeah, uh, there's been like some opposition online t uh, to like, right, not really the movie as a whole, but like the marketing around it. Yeah, sure. uh, and. And he's like, do you want to watch it again? I'm like, Ugh, bro. Like, we we see each other infrequently. I love hanging out with you. Yeah. A second Oppenheimer viewing sounds crazy. <sighs> but Connor is a sweetie pie. He is a sweetie pie, and I yeah. and I and I and I love him a lot. Yeah. But I would I would do it. I'll, I'll go see it with him. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. I will put on my Ludwig mask. <laughs> yeah. You do a dynamite impersonation, um, and you say the end. Wait, did 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 <laughs> he cool. did he lose any more games, or am I the only one who took a game off? Uh, I believe I thought you were the only one who took a game off him because he two owed his match. Uh, Most with, inconsistent chess player in a. <laughs> yeah, actually. Well, it's just because uh, I'm I never got I had, I was working on the metaverse video. Right. And I, I never got to practice and I kept like putting off my coach. I felt so bad. But, Who's the coach? Uh, it was Nemo. Oh. And, and she was the sweetest and available and everything. And then um, uh, Levy also like reached out and I just couldn't. Like it was, I had this huge Pokemon brand deal on the video also. And I was like, this is the biggest brand deal I've had of the year. It's an amazing this is brand a deal. huge video. So I like had to prioritize things. So it's a, it's one of those things where I kick myself so hard. 
but I shouldn't. You know what I no, mean? No, you prioritize it correctly. You know what? You know when you Joe Rogan didn't watch the chess tournament. Maybe you're much. like I don't know if you're like me, not but yet. I know some people are out there where you like expect to be good at things despite not putting any work in. Oh uh, well, I think we all like to believe we'd be good at things. Yeah, you know, I like beat myself up real bad when I don't do um, according to my when it doesn't come true estimation of myself. Um, I'm firmly in the camp of saying that the thing is bad. Yeah, the thing is bad. It's not sucks. you. Yeah, that's because if also, it was good, I would be good at it. Yeah. We hide our egos in many weird places, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and I used to do this with my age because mm. I used to watch football and I'd be like, I'm younger than him, so I guess if I tried <laughs> yeah. starting now, yeah, yeah, I'd probably be like not Mahomes level, but like right. <laughs> just under. Yeah, I would be in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. That's not a question. <laughs> not, <laughs> not first pick. I'm humble, not first I'm pick, humble, of course. Third pick, um, <laughs> uh, but I do go to the best team in the league, <laughs> and I start. Yeah, um, no, I choose. <laughs> I I did the same thing. I genuinely felt sadness and a depressive episode when I came to terms with the fact that I was 19, which is the same year that Mark Zuckerberg founded Facebook, mm. and I was not going to found Facebook. I was in my Georgia Tech dorm room studying computer science thinking that that was the only like success metric. Yeah. And I like genuinely like felt bummed out about it. I was not Very silly. sad, <laughs> but I felt weird about missing the 27 club. Like, not I, dying? Yeah. I was like, well now what if I die at 29? Ugh, that's embarrassing. Sucks. How embarrassing. I was 27 and I was like, oh, 27 club. And then I, I mentioned <laughs> that to someone. They're like, you wouldn't get on the Wikipedia page. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Not even the most famous Ludwig anymore, you know? Yeah. And that's Damn. why I was really happy to get through it because <laughs> it, it would suck to die at 27 and not oh, make it no. to the Wikipedia page. Yeah. It would have to come up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If yeah. you died at 27, it'd be like, well, there's. Yeah, you're like in C also. And it's like <laughs> less important deaths. <laughs> yeah, also. People who died at 27, but it was just like whatever. Yeah, but we Not ran sure out when. of space. But it felt weird to put him next to Kirk Cobain. <laughs> yeah. Don't know if we put that in the episode. <laughs> People that died at 27, but were very effectively replaced with AI. Yeah. No one noticed. <laughs> well, speaking of places we hide our ego, mm. um, what like, I want to like shift into talking a little bit about mental health. Because you, uh, you're a very, pro like people externally would see you as like a very productive creator, very high energy, very kind of always on, right? Um, but I imagine that is not the full 360 degrees of you as a person. So like, how do you, you know, keep your spirits up? How do you like care for yourself? Compartmentalize those two halves of yeah. your life. How do you hide your ego in other unique places? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I am, the more I realize, very uh, lucky. Cause I feel like I got a, like a pretty good situation going on, on up in my skull. Mm -hmm. I like I like being in my brain. Yeah. I like thinking and being alone with my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I think what I do explore though, is I've gotten a bit into like, like, okay, what are things that would make me feel like a good person, make me feel like I'm doing good in the world? And so I shift that, like most of my goals are aligned with what that is. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, usually a selfish endeavor attempting to be selfless. And so I like, you know, I will make a goal. Like, so my most recent one that I achieved was like, I wanted to do the Yard Podcast to make my friends rich, to yeah, give them yeah. a level of financial comfortability that they could, you know, settle down, get a house, whatever, right. which I achieved. And I was yeah. like, okay, maybe that was too narrow. Perhaps this was yeah. too maybe selfish of just the group around me. This is what most people do in life. Uh, I would like to expand it now to like, like larger local community people around me. Uh, so that's my next goal. But like, I think I'm very just focused on that stuff and I don't get too, I don't get too sad boy. That's good. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I got into philosophy for a bit. Yeah. That helps me get through it. I think for, for me, for a long time, I don't know if you guys were like this, I was scared of death. Oh, yeah, not scared of death for me. Yeah, were but you ever? I think it's just weird, but but where does that, what, like? Maybe in the abstract, but yeah, like the, the abstract. more of dying. Yes. The mm. the absence, I like, not that, you know. I think everything I was, going dark, whatever. But right. the, I have a- The impact on the community around me as well, that felt, that's a weird obligation. I realized I wasn't afraid of death uh, in a very stupid way. I was flying to Seattle to interview for Microsoft and I was really nervous about the interview. And I was like, 
honestly, if this plane goes down, I don't have to do the interview. <laughs> <laughs> and you're more was, scared about the interview. Yeah, no. I don't know why. Wow. It was very weird. Well, that's, in, that's insane. It is insane. Yeah. To be fair, you can't screw up dying in a plane crash. Yeah. You can screw up the interview real bad. I think, I think there's a part of me that really wants to um, achieve my potential mm. and uh, the weight the, the the weight is off if I die, <laughs> and sure. that's and that's that's what I like work on. It's like something I'm aware of. Uh, when were you always feeling that until a certain point, or at yes. a certain point you started feeling? I, well, I had massive fears of death growing up when hmm. I was young. It was like like debilitating at times because I would try to think of what you think of after death, which is nothing. And I'm like 11. <laughs> yeah, so I was like that was like a lot for an 11 year old. Yeah, uh, and so I think I carried that for a while, and then. Uh, kind of the inverse of I think a lot of people's experience where you feel like you literally can't die. Yes. Because also when you're 11, you can fall over, split your head open and just be fine the next yeah. day. Yes. Whereas now if I stub my toe, I'm just injured for the rest of my life. Yeah, I think I just realized what death was earlier because I had death and family. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was like, well, that sounds so shit. Yeah. Uh, and don't want that. And then like had to come with, to grips with it much earlier. And for me, it's the opposite of you where once I like, now I feel really cool with it. And like, I try to put myself in the headspace that I was scared of when I was young and I feel much better about it. Right, that's good. Uh, it's a good way to like, kind of put yourself through that same stimulus and go, oh, we've grown. Yeah. I don't have the same experience here, yeah. Cause what I would do when I was young is like, oh, I'll watch One Piece and then I'll stop thinking about it cause Luffy's going gummo gummo. <laughs> and now I'll do the opposite where I'm like listening to music and I'm like, let me pause a song on my walk and think about it, which is psychotic in a way, but helpful i think that's like you are you when you're doing that kind of like challenging yourself like it's like oh let's do this exercise it's like a little brain um exercise yeah i'm trying to make sure i'm not always hiding in a distraction True. yeah and because it, like it's very easy to like always be listening to a podcast while you're mm -hmm. cooking or doing laundry mm -hmm. or music or watching a youtube video on the side yeah. watch a video as you're turning your face from the food you were eating to the tv where you're watching something yes yeah. and oftentimes people's only silence in thoughts of their own is like deciding what to watch Right. Uh, and and so like very active time spent like just in your own head, I think is good yeah. to have control over that. Mm -hmm. So that's it's like an exercise to do that. And and doing that, I've become not scared of death, which makes me feel not scared of most things. Yeah. Which is funny because you're like still scared of the Microsoft interview. I don't know if you're yeah, still scared not of still scared of the Microsoft interview. But then I but I became too confident in my old career. Mm. And then I like went to something where I was like not confident in and then some right. of that stuff like came back. Um, but but that's great. Like, do, do you have a like fears of heights or anything like that? Because even though I'm not afraid of death, I'm still like, well, that's not cool. <laughs> I get like a spidey sense in my gooch mm -hmm. when people like toast and dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Drink a lot of milk. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna come out point growth style. When people are in high heights and they're like leaning over oh. like a railing, yeah. that puckers me up more than if I were to do it because I'm like, I'm not gonna jump. Like I'm gonna right. firmly grip this. Yeah. But if someone else is, I like for some reason I'm like, they're gonna fucking fall off. Yeah. It's gonna be the most horrible thing ever. Uh and that that gets my tingles going. I'm yeah. getting sweaty thinking about that. That's ugh. I'm grumpy about it. Like I'm now at a point where I'm like, oh Joe, come on. What are you doing? Stop yeah. enjoying that. Yeah. yeah, you're like, ah, the kids. You're wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're wrong to enjoy that. Speaking of your good skull, uh, <laughs> let me <laughs> let me measure that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Uh, I think yeah, we I, always close with phrenology. Yeah, that's like one of our things. Um, I watched some of your Anthony Padilla interview, and you had talked about like I don't know if it was like alluding to being bullied, like when you were kind of a kid or like kind of being different, you know, pronouncing your name differently. Uh, but did you experience any bullying at all, like growing up or any like not belonging? I think if there was any bullying, it was like friend bullying. Mm -hmm. sure. And the, my friends were like, you know, they were they weren't bullies, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They Just were like hard the on each other yeah. in the way that guy friends, I think, are. Yeah, yeah. Were they but, trying, trying to calcify each other, make each other a little less. Yes. Uh, maybe add some defenses, a little bit of armor for the future. So I had a lot of that because mm -hmm. I like, you know, the, I had a couple easy targets. One was my chest hole, you know. Oh, or do you not have a sternum? Yeah, I have a chussy. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. The other was I made a YouTube channel when I was 16. And uh, and like, that's very embarrassing. Yeah. Because that is very vulnerable. Yeah, you're not allowed to try things or explore. 
And you're bad too. Yeah. So it's like you are exploring, but you're also exploring poorly because you're just making your first couple of YouTube videos. It yeah. literally be like if you you start learning the guitar, but you can only do it on stage. Yeah. You are learning chords in front of all it's your friends. It's a really good way to put it. And then and then all your friends are there at the open mic and they're like, oof. Yeah. It's bad. Um, and you're like, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, know I, I made know, it. I'm like, I know, but I want to keep doing it, maybe. <laughs> uh, my first YouTube video when I was 14 went viral, and then I never made a video after that until I started my YouTube channel. Really? It was just me dancing to High School Musical 2. Okay. Like, I learned the choreography, but, um, but I was so afraid of not being able to, mm. like, I was uh, 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 I was afraid of like flopping so early. This seems consistent with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's, you're very not you're very worried about not hitting some potential. Exactly. Yeah, but see, and so like I was 14 then, so it like I think I was still working through the exact same thing that I was working through when I was like 20 on the plane to Microsoft or whatever. Um, and it still sucks. Like like um, like I'm uh, frustrated, but I think I've gotten better at like getting back up and kind of trying again at like those failures. Do you have like a similar feeling when you upload a video? Like, do you have an expectation for it to hit a metric hmm. that maybe previous videos have hit? Uh, I think, I think I have like a realistic expectation. So, like when things are unexpectedly low, I'm like, is everything coming crashing down? But uh, usually, I think right now things have kind of. I don't know. I've been in like a holding pattern, I think, for a couple of years while I was like working on some like mental health and life stuff. Um, we're only now am I like getting back to like really like going for it mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, and so it's funny because I get uh, like I saw somebody tweeting today because it was Post Malone thing that was like, oh, Jarvis is finally getting the recognition. Like I'm still like a underdog to people, even though I've like been in the game for like a couple years now, just because. I don't feel like I fully like applied myself because I've always had like other shit to yeah. like, focus on, um, so, like like with mental health and health and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, a bit, a little bit. Yeah, it's it's funny how you can be always emerging because you're always being discovered by new people. Yeah, and it's like you know, unless you're Taylor fucking Swift, right? Who can't be emerging? Well, there's safety in that. I think you know the reason I started. I, I have like a bunch of channels and I think part of the reason is mitigating failure mm. because uh, it's also content strategy, but mitigating the failure of like when I made my second channel, I was like, oh, I can just post on this because the numbers don't matter here. You know what I mean? Oh, to an extent. Then to an extent. Matter. And, then, and then eventually, they, you know, it's like now my second channel is about to hit a million subscribers and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like now I care if this does well or not. So I got to start a third channel. No, you know, but it's like you cat you realize like, oh, I've fallen into the same trap. Yeah. yeah. It's very common in streaming too. People have alt streams mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't care about my average viewership number here until they do care about their average viewership mm -hmm. number there. Yeah. And then it, oftentimes alt channels become main channels because they can't even go on their main channel because what's worthy of a main channel now. Exactly. Yeah. And that that's definitely something that I've like gone through and have now like started to develop a like content strategy around, but I mean, it's it's such a abstract it's to the same degree where like the most agony I see in any. I'm I feel very isolated from the, my channel just because numbers are good. I engage in it just when there's a brand deal or something because generally Sad Boys is the thing I enjoy doing the most. Mm -hmm. I like making videos for my channel just fine. If I couldn't do Sad Boys, that would be a wage. You know, it's it's not it's a, it's nice as insurance. But because it's a shared project, I was never the editor for it. I've always liked having a little bit of distance from it. Its performance is interesting to me, but I have no ego attached to it. If a video does well, it is never because I tried harder on it. Because ultimately, the things that we value are vibes. It's, I, oh man, I'm so disappointed in the lighting in this section. And I've never in my life seen a comment about it. Or like the the standard for like acoustics, for example, the amount of echo you could have in a video versus the number of people that would notice or care. It's a joke. There's like, it, it just doesn't matter to people. Audio that. fidelity is like there's just a floor. If you just hit the floor, it's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. This, both your both your channels died. Sad boys dies. You falled off. No yeah. one cares about you. This You're old. Ace. Yeah. You're old crazy. now. Sick. Very old. I'm free. Everyone's this, saying this. Yeah. What yeah. the hell? What do you do now? Um, Diet 27. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a time machine. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I like making stuff. I think I've always like, be it like apps or like, like I think there's a chance that I like start a company someday that's like, I don't know, do built solving some problem. I think I'm confident in my ability to like solve problems and stuff. So I've never been afraid of my channel dying because I'm like, I could just do it again if I needed to, if I wanted to. Like even if um, it's a completely different market or if it's a completely different thing, uh, even creatively less satisfying, maybe a little bit more cynical. I mean, if I if I needed to, like if I'm, it depends on it, whether or not I'm uh, trying to survive or if I'm trying to be fulfilled. But um, if I'm trying to be fulfilled, I think solving challenging problems in collaborating with people is like something that I enjoy. Uh, and I also enjoy like telling stories and stuff. So I find some way of doing that. But I like left behind a successful software engineering career to do content on like a lark. Mm -hmm. So I think I've been like confident enough in my ability to like uh, follow my curiosity, I guess, in life. So I just probably just keep doing that. Oh, me? Uh, it's all kind of shit. I would celebrate. <laughs> I would be, I'm free. I am no longer. I don't keep pretending to be British. It's <laughs> That's the hardest part. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that is kind of tied to it because my presence in America, I'm still on temporary work visas. It's like seven oh. years of being nominally American, but not ever. If I don't have the job, I can't be here. Right. So there is this, uh, anytime I've had an idea for a company, a project, an alternative path, dual wielding is really hard. Like, oh, I'll try out this thing as well. I can't, I'm not allowed to make money from other stuff wow. legally. And I just associate, it, it will always just be a case of like, the gray matter hasn't spent enough time spinning. I've spent so many years having an idea and then immediately putting it away because I know I can't do it. Right. Mm. Whereas there was a point maybe five years ago where there was a little bit more like, oh, I don't know, maybe I'm still in tech. Maybe jumping off a tech, I'll start this thing. I'll throw something around. Then I started a company in 2019 and the visa transition didn't work and I got deported. It was, I tried it one time and it didn't work. Yeah. So now I am firmly in the camp of, in this hypothetical, let's say I just am a citizen or something. I, I feel kind of the same way. I think I would just do a similar, I'll do whatever I have the bona fides for. I think personally, it would be easier for me to keep doing stuff like this than to go back to tech because I was doing partnerships and administrative stuff. That's not so much a like marketable skill mm -hmm. or like a, Hey, I'm here to do engineering. I'm like, oh great, There's, we have a bunch of slots you can fit into. And moving backwards also bothers me, even if it is a good thing mm -hmm. or even a better th position than I am in. There's something uh, yeah. intuitively uncomfortable to me about my life in 2025 really resembling my life in 2015 with this little gap in the middle that like isn't wouldn't be included in the movie. Yeah, explain Doesn't this gap on your resume. <laughs> yeah, your life memory uh, resume. What would you do when you fall off? Yeah. Uh, I want to start a bakery. Ooh. Oh, fuck yeah. I want to bake really good bread. I like that. Do you Have you baked bread before? Nope. Okay. I relate to this. <laughs> I used to say I was going to start a sandwich shop when I retire, and I still think it might happen, like a little neighborhood mm -hmm. sandwich shop, and I've never... I don't couldn't make a sandwich to this day. Do you bake anything? I can make a fire sandwich. I, 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 okay, I've baked a lot of banana bread. Okay, nice. that's a start. You just go take the banana I've actually, out. yeah, I've made that. Cutie's a proficient baker. Mm -hmm. I just love, bread's my favorite food. Good. I just good love food. bread. Yeah. And Sounds think, like you want the job to, of eating bread. Yeah, right now I'm, I kill it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Not many better than me. Uh, and there's a lot of dog shit bread in the, in the US of A. Of a. Mm. And I feel like if I started like a local bakery. True. Because the way they have it, like when I would go to Europe, that's all I'd eat is just bread. And they yeah. all have like a little corner bakery. Yeah, I never understood how that works. You go to Europe, everybody's just eating bread and cheese. Because they have a they have a local freaking boulangerie, which yeah. is making a hundred loaves a day. Yeah. They but, sell out. But I'm like, there's no vegetables here. Like I was studying abroad in Spain. And I was like, everybody's just eating fucking ham, cheese, and bread at yes, all sir. times. It's because they like, nap. Okay. <laughs> they're yeah, they're, they all walk like 10 time. miles a day. They walk they, so much. You need that starch. You need yeah. that protein. Makes sense. My mom used to live in uh, the super, super, super remote rural town in France. And I don't know if this was a genuine like municipal law that allowed them to do this, but because they're constantly drinking wine and napping and there's one store, there supposedly is a constitutional style law where every citizen is entitled to bread and wine. Like you have to be able to get it. 
it's like access or like it's free access to it to okay get yeah. it. like uh in the, you can't get it for free, but you can't be physically prohibited from accessing it. It's kind yeah, of like that should be can, a human right. Yeah, it's like yeah. a walk score when you're like buying a house. <laughs> but because of that, and there's a lot of drunk driving, on the rare occasion where somebody gets caught drunk driving and they lose their license, they get given this hilarious little car that peaks out at like 20 oh. miles an hour and you are allowed to r- drive it on main roads Yeah, to go and get bread and wine. That's like, great. Not allowed to not do that. They should say like, wild. I'm a dumbass, yeah. <laughs> but you can still ride it. It's like a dunce yeah, cap. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a glorified bird scooter. <laughs> right. No. Well, I feel like you like little weird vehicles. Uh, yeah, I do. I have a, I have a Vespa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a K truck. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Which are getting massively popular now. Oh yeah. You, you think you brought them, brought the popularity? I wouldn't credit myself that much. Uh, it's gotta be right. I think, I think it's gotten popular because I think there's just a general pushback to big truck bigger truck bigger truck ram week ram ram truck it makes get your so truck now. mad i get so mad on the road i'm like this truck should not be this big you can't fit in the lanes and i think in the parking lots when you see them park yeah. like assholes and it's like also most of the time they're like squeaky clean oh, ford dude. f-350s that aren't even being used for construction yeah and you know you see like hey the real work vehicles are like you know smaller toyota trucks or whatever yeah and like the truck beds of K trucks are oftentimes as big and fit as much, right? You know, with less torque and less whatever. I guess if you're yeah. moving steel, that's fine. The K trucks are like the little trucks you see in Japan, right? Yeah, K yeah. is just like it's for small cars. Those K oh, cars okay. or small yeah, cars. Yeah. So a K truck is like a small truck. Uh, and yeah, they, I see them all the time now. They're very popular because you can't use them. Depends on what you get, but oftentimes you can't use them on the road. I was gonna ask you imported one, yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is the steering wheel on the right side of the... Yeah. Okay. Steering wheel's on the right. The blinker and the windshield wipers are flipped. Uh, Always fucks me up. Yeah. Uh, I haven't ridden it much this summer because the AC's kind of bunk on it. Also, I get stopped so much in that car. Really? <laughs> so it's like what I imagine it's like to own a supercar. Because mm. on the like red light... I'll, someone will roll down the window. Right. And they'll be like, hey, hell of a car, huh? What's the gas mileage? <laughs> you know, and it's like, I got like this list of like gas mileage. How much yeah. does it cost? Is that from Japan? Right. That I have to go through. You know, uh, your feet are sticking out the bottom like a Flintstones car. Yeah. That's how you power it. Yeah, it's, it's actually a free. <laughs> gets me my steps in. <laughs> I have to be able to get wine. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is how I eat all this bread. <laughs> and, and it's doxed. Like, exactly oh, what yeah, it looks God, like yeah. where it is so i i worry that you know it's too recognizable mm-hmm. because i sent i sent everyone on twitter.com to find it after it got stolen yeah that was wild that was a fun saga but also made it maybe one of the most recognizable cars yeah uh in, in you put everybody on watch yeah yeah i guess it benefits you for this becoming popular yes at least have yeah some i need more targets. people to have k trucks to hide mine. right right so it can't be street legal if you get one of the older ones like mine because mm. there's laws for antiques just general citizens it can getting can or dogs. can't be? Can. Oh, okay. Cool. The newer ones I don't think can be road legal, like street legal. I see. In certain states, California won't let you. Arizona will. Texas probably will. But uh, well, They just got cars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 27 years or older, I think any car can be. Um, so you have like a Model T on the highway. Model T, I think so. Yeah. yeah. If you're able to get it moving at highway speeds, at least. Um, you know, I didn't realize, I didn't know that Henry Ford was like a Nazi sympathizer. He was? I oh, he was an empath. I learned this during my... <laughs> he couldn't help it. Yeah, yeah. he was a neurodivergent and minor. <laughs> he was anti-Semitic for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. he had he like had contacts with Hitler. Really? Yeah, or at least according to the video essays I was watching during Oppenheimer Day. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it was this Hitler. <laughs> What's all this about? Yeah. <laughs> it was like he was in contact with Hitler like until the war broke out. And, and then he was America? He couldn't... Like he was afraid of being seen as like a spy or something right. like that. Um, and that might not even be true, but it's something I saw on YouTube and I didn't fact check it. Probably lost a lot of fake homies when he started the war, Hitler. Mm. You know? Yeah, Hitler's like, yo, where are my homies at? <laughs> I keep my circle it's small. Like, well, <laughs> <laughs> Call me Fortnite. To jump back to that previous topic, you have like come out and said like 10 years and I'm done, or I can't remember the time scale, but like you would fit, you would quit streaming. But does that is that all content or is that like you move into... Um, maintenance mode and start the bakery 
Uh, yeah, I think it was originally five years when I first started, which was 2017. Yeah. So that we've passed. Right. We're 20, 23 of the Lord okay, of our yeah. Savior. Uh, and so I extended it because initially I just wanted to do it for that amount of time. Then I was like, oh, it's enough time. I can do something else after. Uh, but I have too much responsibility to leave because mm-hmm. I have like a company with 18 employees. And so if I leave, they all lose their job. Yeah. It's not like a traditional job where you can just swap out the CEO. Right. Um, unless someone were to make YouTube videos on my channel in my stead. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to make it uh, through off brand, another company I started. Yeah. Uh, sustainable enough by doing content with other creators and making events that aren't exclusive to me. Uh, make that company big enough that everyone who works for me can like transition to that company and then they will have a job if I fall off or if I quit or whatever. Yeah. Do you want to get out or is it just like you want a future proof? Uh, I think. I don't, I'm a very short term thinker. Mm-hmm. Like I have goals for like a year or maybe two in the future. So my goal is to be able to stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My goal is not to stop inherently, but like I could not stop right now right. without sacrificing too many people's jobs. Yeah. And that responsibility is too high mm-hmm. to to like make that selfish selfish decision. Yeah. So it's like what I have to do is make off brand big enough. Yeah. And so that's like that's my thought. You want the decision to not be selfish. Assume, yes. like, or to not uh, have an obligation. Just to be impacting me, yeah. not yeah. impacting other people's livelihood. Yeah, does that weigh on you at all? Well, it like, pushes like, me. Yeah, it pushes you. Cause I'm like, cause there's, you know, coming from a, not devil's advocate, but coming from another angle, it's like totally okay to want to stop. You know, it's like, if you didn't want to do this anymore and it was way, it was like mentally taxing. It doesn't sound like it is, but like if someone else were in the situation and were like, I don't want to keep doing this, it hurts me too much to keep doing this, no one would fault them for stopping, even if it meant, you know, people losing their jobs, because ultimately, like, you can't, you can only run yourself so raw. Yeah. I think you could probably like salvage it based off like, hey, this is impacting me too harshly. Mm-hmm. But like, I had made a decision to scale up my sure. team to that point. Sure. So that I have a responsibility because that was my choice. I did not have to do that. Yeah. Most YouTubers are one, two men team or, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, they have a couple contracted editors. For sure. Um, I didn't want to do that. And so I, I think I bear that responsibility. Yeah. And so like, like I probably could salvage it. I probably could stop and they, they would understand. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that's fair. It sounds also, it's like a version of the building out lifestyles and income for the community as a goal that you were describing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would like, um, well, when's this podcast air? Soon, right? Friday. Probably yes, right. early Friday, yeah. I'll tell you off pod, my bigger idea. Sure. But that is part of it, yeah. Mm. Um, and so I think it, it has to scale up to that point. Do you feel any, and you, you shouldn't feel obliged to, because this was not by any means a choice, but you have a very broad audience. I don't know your demographic, but there's young enough people that watch you to be heavily influenced by like your worldview or not necessarily political, just ideological, emotionally like what you'll express words you will or won't say things like that well i think i'm very honest about my points of expertise i think i know a lot about streaming and youtube uh and i know a lot about esports and, mm-hmm. and that's like my main areas of expertise and and i try to be very candid if i'm talking about something that is outside of my area of expertise and and i don't want to come off as an authority on anything because like i try to be you know uh politically knowledgeable like i try to know what the fuck's going on right. in america in the world in california and florida whatever yeah but like on a at a surface level sure uh and so to then come out and be like dude f-. like this just this is the issue right now with mm-hmm, california right. we need yeah. to do this yeah like, i don't fucking know right uh there's and, a lot of value and power in acknowledging shit you don't know yes it makes you seem less alien to people yeah and people are very quick to make definitive statements on things they have a surface level understanding of and they they often have the highest confidence yeah uh and and then experts will have way less confidence uh-huh. yeah and Dunning, also way Dunning kruger yeah. way smaller of a, a megaphone yeah. Um, um, yeah, like, uh, for example, some people may make statements about their gut biome and really not know what the hell is talking <laughs> about. This is a perfect example. <laughs> yeah. Literally, while I was talking about God foods, I was like, understand, I'm only good at esports and streaming, right, right, right. but I still have like firm beliefs about yeah, my Yeah, sure. And everyone feels things strongly. It's just understanding the filter or having the filter. Yes. It's uh, Zug Vlad Mask in a lot of regards. Zug's Wong is eating. Zug's, 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 Zug's Zug's all Wong. food is bad. <laughs> right. Yeah, you can't yeah. eat anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a comic of you <laughs> with food and it's like, 
like Zugs Wild. <laughs> that is like a New York Times, very sophisticated joke. Yeah, like a New joke, Yorker cartoon or something. But yeah. it's not funny, so they have to write what everything is. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. The economy, it's the dark. Um, I, but I think I do a bit of that on Mogul Mail more than my main channel, because right. mm -hmm. I understand my main channel is more so like, hey, you are watching this on a lunch break or yeah. at, you know, after school or whatever it is. Uh, I don't need to like inundate you with, with what I believe. Yeah. And then mogul mail is like, you've clicked this because you want my opinion on the thing I'm talking about. Right. You have signed up for this. Yeah. It's okay for me to give my opinion. Um, so I try to, I try to do a balance. Cause if it's like, Hey guys, I'm going to do like a tier list stream. And then in it, I'm going to tell you my political beliefs. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. little bit of a bait and switch. Right. Right. And it's like, I totally know what you mean. Like you're not trying to bait. You, any creator can share their opinion at any time, but uh, you're, it sounds like you're more a purist about like, I want this to be what it is and, and nothing more. Um, you have an outlet for those two wolves, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think I like, I've gotten pretty uh, like honest about what I think about on, on mogul mail. Like I talked a lot about when threads came out cause I made a video about it. Mm -hmm. Like just general issues I see with, like social media as a whole and like this this you know way we trick ourselves into consuming it because it's beneficial and we're learning about stuff around the world but it's like hey what is the real value of knowing what is happening yeah in this area of the world when like we are only able to control something local around us i mean and this has been there's a been discourse about this since uh you know 24 hour news cycles yeah because there's so much alarmist like stuff about things that you can't do anything about and it just creates the sense of distrust and fear that that something's going wrong all the time and it's there's nothing you can do about it no it's agency very difficult to have a take on a sensation you need like something tangible to say yes or no to that's why every take you see is contrarian because you can't have a take of, yeah, I am afraid all the time. Yeah. Actually, if you can believe it. <laughs> but I don't have anything to say about it. It's actually because of uh, the, the, it's actually because of the theory. I've been reading theory. Yeah. I've actually been reading a ton of medium articles so I can pretend I've been, <laughs> I've been reading the headlines of medium articles. <laughs> um, well, Led, I think this is about the time we land this Sad Boys plane for the main plane episode i wanted to rhyme but i failed. <laughs> sure um go ahead hard landing uh Soft yeah landing? actually hard landing please put on your seatbelt <laughs> yeah. okay actually um, a rock hard landing on the nose of the plane <laughs> we we will be jumping right over to our patreon exclusive podcast sad boys nights on patreon.com slash sad boys ludwig thank you so much for joining us today um is there anything you want to leave the audience with uh yes um word of advice if you um don't buy Starbucks. You will you will become a millionaire. Right. It's yeah, the latte sure. problem. Yeah. That Everybody, is the issue. Yeah. That's the issue. Millennials aren't buying diamonds. Not a finance expert. If by we the just way. solve it, we'll all be rich. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have to stop Starbucks. <laughs> They're keeping us all down. All right. We end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. We, we love, love you. you. And we're sorry. Boom. Are you on a visa or where are you from? I'm from New Hampshire. Oh, okay. Oh, you're on a visa. From they give yeah. us a visa. Yeah. Oh, okay. If you're from New England, they yeah. consider it a different country. Yeah, yeah that makes sure. sense. You're like not quite in the union. You will yet to prove that you're not too close to Boston because otherwise you say too many slurs to go to California. Yeah. Mm. You're Irish. <laughs> yeah. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving girl? Moving girl, how's your day looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, oh, you want it? Guys are rich for me.